Good morning. I'm not Pastor Stephanie Haskins. I'm Ron Johnson, and I'm a lay member uh, here at Niantic Community Church. So welcome to our worship service. There we go. Uh, welcome to our worship service. Um, if you're on Zoom, uh, welcome. If you uh, choose to join us on YouTube later, welcome. And if you're here uh, in person, welcome. We like to say here that whoever you are and wherever you are in life's journey, you are welcome here. And I would like to explain what does that mean? So you're welcome here if you've been a member of the church for 50 years, served on every board and committee, <laughs> pledged every year, uh, and God bless you for that, you're welcome. But you're also welcome here if you walked in the door five minutes ago. So if you are here for the very first time, a special welcome to you. You're welcome here if you're a nuclear family. You're welcome here if you came by yourself because you are with your family uh, during this hour. You're welcome uh, no matter what gender you are and no matter what you call your significant other, whether it's husband, wife, or partner. You're welcome here if you're hurting today. And the only person that knows it is you. So give that hurt up this hour to the one that created us. You are welcome here if you have a fire in your belly and you know exactly what God's calling you to be. And you're welcome here if you don't know why you're here. So whoever you are and wherever you are in life's journey, you are welcome. So in that spirit on Zoom, uh, please say hello. And if uh, in person, please stand up and welcome your neighbors. All right, enough is enough. <laughs> Some housekeeping. Um, if you're on the inside of the pews, please take uh, the red fellowship uh, pad and pass that along. Okay? The purpose of the pad is not to take attendance. The purpose of the pad is for you to see who is with you in your pew. Okay? Uh, there are uh, prayer cards in the pew. And if you have a prayer and you want to write it down, um, please do that. And we'll take those, uh, the ushers will come take those prayer cards on the first uh, hymn. Um, we have a congregational meeting uh, today after uh, worship. And um, everybody's invited to attend that, both on Zoom and uh, here in, the, uh, in person. We do have coffee hour uh, downstairs. So please come down and have a coffee. I think there's a pie uh, sign-up sheet uh, for summer suppers that's down there, so they'd appreciate uh, you um, signing up for that. Okay, and we can have some uh, time of uh, fellowship and worship. Okay, is there any other announcements that need to be made today? Ralph, you wanna come forward? Announce that the Ralph, uh, yeah, Mike. microphone. Gotcha. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Uh, I just wanted to announce that the uh, stewardship committee for this year has been formed. The committee members are uh, Sue Thompson, Judy Snitkin, Georgie Granger, and myself. We look forward to working with you uh, during the year. Thank you. Before we. Um join together in the call to worship, I want to explain my stole. And Wendy asked me uh, why I was wearing this, so I told her, wait, and I'll, t I'll tell everybody. So this stole uh, was given to me by Reconciling Ministries uh, when I went to annual conference um, 
a number of years ago, the New England Annual Conference of the United Methodist Church. Reconciling Ministries is a part of the Methodist Church that supports uh, justice and rights of LGBTQ people. Now, we are also uh, affiliated with the United Church of Christ and the Open and Affirming Coalition is the uh, similar group that supports LGBTQ rights and justice. So I'm wearing this today because 20 years ago, uh, this past January, we voted to become an open and affirming and reconciling congregation. And we support both denominations and they support us in that journey, okay? I wear this because my family, I have family members that are LGBTQ plus, and I'm also a godparent uh, of a couple, uh, of a daughter, uh, of a lesbian couple uh, that are friends of mine and are former members of this church. And I wear it today because I'm in support of my friends who are LGBTQ plus, uh, and we are in unchartered uh, waters right now. So my support is with you and this church supports you in this journey that we're on. So that's why I'm wearing it today. And I was asked why I didn't go down further, but I can't answer that. <laughs> Let us join together in the call to worship. O oh, beloved, you invite us to rest. To forgive our weaknesses. Who will respond with hearts? Please stand and join together in our first hymn.
It's now time for our children's uh, message. Do we have any children that like to come and watch uh, Julia? Hi, my friends, Ms. Julia here. I've missed you. I went on an adventure about a week ago with a group of our teenagers and another grown up called the Youth Group Mission Team. And we went all the way to Scranton, Pennsylvania, which is, it's about four hours from here. And we went to go serve God by serving some of God's beloved children, some of the residents, the people who live in that area, who can't afford to fix up their homes. So I wanted to share about something I noticed because this, I've been doing these mission trips for 21 years. And something I've noticed over time is that the work we do is so important to these residents. It gives them hope. And even if it's just painting their house, it keeps the house protected during like winter weather or storms. So the work that we do is actually very important. And my resident this year is in a wheelchair. He has some really serious health concerns and he had a wheelchair ramp that was falling apart. He couldn't leave his home. So we had to tear it out and build a totally new wheelchair ramp. And we also painted his in, the entire outside of his house. So we did both of those things. And what I've noticed, though, is that as important as the work is, and I'll show you pictures of our work at the very end of this, as important as the work is, it's just as important to listen to the resident and to sh hear their story and share our own and make that connection because God isn't just in the work that we do. God is in the relationships that we form and nurture. So one of my favorite things is if like if I need a break and I need to drink water, I go and find the resident and I talk with them and I hear their story and I make connections. And that is just as important as the physical work we do. There's a story in the Bible about Mary and Martha. And sometimes the people like Martha who do things and they're very task oriented, they get a little bit, sometimes they look down their nose a little bit on the Marys who sit and listen and nurture that relationship. And sometimes the Marys can do the same thing to the Marthas. They can be like, oh, they're so worried about painting that garage that they're forgetting that this is a person and they need to feel valued by being seen and heard. But you know what? Both are important and both are ways to follow Jesus. I am so, so proud of our group of teenagers. They worked so hard. There were some real obstacles that we faced this year. Um, but God was at the center of all of it. And God works through all things for good. So I hope that when you're older, you will go serve also. And you'll find that balance between being a Mary and a Martha. Will you pray with me? Loving God, thank you for the residents of Scranton, Pennsylvania, who opened their homes and their hearts to us. Thank you for being with us as we served. May you bless the children listening with opportunities to serve as well. 
We love you, God. And we are grateful. Amen. So here's a picture of my work crew and the work that we did and our grateful resident. scripture this morning is the one Julia referred to. It's from Luke 10, chapter, uh, verses 38 to 42. Now as they went on their way, Jesus entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him. Martha had a sister named Mary who sat at Jesus' feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to Jesus and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things, but few things are needed. Indeed, only one. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. Well, Julia stole my thunder. <laughs> I wasn't going to do this, but I've changed my mind. Uh, and Jan will cringe uh, when I do this. <laughs> Under full disclosure, I have an uh, admission to make. When uh, Pastor Stephanie asked me to preach uh, quite a few weeks ago, uh, I said, uh, can I think about it? Yeah. So I went to the common lectionary and said, oh, I looked at the, uh, the scripture reading and I said, oh, Luke 10, 25 to 37, you know, the story of the Good Samaritan. I can do that. So last Sunday uh, before we came to worship, I uh, looked at the bulletin and I said, I picked the wrong Sunday. <laughs> I was one week off. So our kids are asking uh, Jan, you know, is dad okay, you know, yeah. is he losing it? So, hopefully not. So my message today is um, women of faith. And it's about Martha and Mary, 2,000 years ago. Uh, but my message is also about today and about the women uh, that have been witnesses here in this congregation. Uh, throughout our 300 plus years, okay? In the Faith Forum, um, and uh, Faith Forum, if you don't know what that is, it's our adult class that uh, uh, wrestles with scripture every Sunday. 
And by the way, there is no faith forum today because of the uh, congregational meeting. We discuss often about the role of women in scripture. Roles of women were severely restricted. There are passages treating women as inferior to men. The society was patriarchal in nature where men held the leadership positions. There are places in the world today where not much has changed. We, however, have hope when we look to Jesus and his ministry. This morning, we will look at his relationship with women. Or, uh, spe specifically, we are taking a look at the story of Martha and Mary, who are two women of the Bible. They were sisters from Bethany, which is just miles from uh, Jerusalem, and Jesus visited them on many occasions. They were apparently close friends, and it was a good place to stop on the way to Jerusalem. They are mentioned numerous times in Scripture, in John, where their brother Lazarus was brought back from the dead, also in John, where Mary washed the feet of Jesus and anointed him with expensive perfume, and in Luke, where Jesus came to their home for a visit along with some of the disciples in the passage that Margaret just read. Jesus sought out women in his ministry, and this included Martha and Mary. This account shows the openness and the acceptance of women amongst his followers. This was countercultural to other Jewish leaders of the time. Mary was one of the women that understood Jesus when the disciples did not. Mary got it when Jesus brought her brother back from the dead. Mary got it when she washed Jesus' feet, knowing that the end was not far off. And Mary got it when Jesus came to her home, seeking her company and friendship. Mary was perceptive and understood the ministry of Jesus. I am blessed by having one of the most perceptive persons I know in my life. Jan sees many things that totally escape me. Many times she gets it long before I do. When it comes to perception, women versus men, I think that men mostly don't have a clue. <laughs> I was hoping I'd get that reaction. I think this included many of the disciples. I've had other women in my life who also got it. My great-grandmother was a pioneer woman who was raising a family in the 1880s around Roswell, New Mexico. And yes, I've had people ask me if my Johnson relatives were aliens. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Someone said, and? If you didn't hear that. Uh, they immigrated from West Texas to New Mexico in a covered wagon. There were no churches or pastors at the time, and she had to preside over the funeral of their youngest son, who um, drowned in the Pecos River. She also formed a Sunday school class that became the first United Methodist Church of Roswell. I truly believe that her DNA has been passed on down through the generations that have shaped not just my faith, but my brother and my sister. My mother made sure that the three of us learned a music instrument. She was an accomplished alto. She sang in the church choir, and to this day, when I sing in the choir, I feel the presence of her. And I embarrass my kids when I sing, just like she embarrassed me. My sister, who was raised a Methodist, became a devout Catholic. She spent 25 years taking a confirmation class on mission trips to places like Juarez, Mexico, until one of their visits, um, they went to a, um, a restaurant which was held up by armed robbers, and they were made to lay on the floor, and they thought they were going to get shot in the back of the head. So that was the last time they went to Juarez. She was awarded the highest honor given to a lay person in the Catholic Church by Pope Benedict in 2009. 
She was always searching and learning new things on her first faith journey, never satisfied with the status quo. Someone who got it. Our church is blessed by the powerful witness of women and their faith who have got it. During the 1740s, our membership declined until it was said that only two elderly ladies remained to keep us going. We are here because of these two souls. And we are countercultural here at NCC, just like Jesus was. We have more, uh, more women in leadership positions than men, and the president of our congregation has been filled by as many women as men. We've had gifted women pastors lead us over the years, and then that includes our own Pastor Stephanie. Now, I told Georgie this earlier that I was going to call her out. This past Tuesday night, she said that we should acknowledge at times those in our congregation that have stood out in their efforts to live their faith. So, Georgie, you share the blame uh, with me because I'm sure this person doesn't want to uh, have this uh, brought up. But I think it's only appropriate that we're talking about uh, women in faith, and we're also talking about what's going on in the congregational meeting uh, later today. The reason that I asked Margaret Holmberg to read the scripture this morning is because she has gotten it. I'm asking forgiveness. She was one of the first uh, persons that I met when I came here. She has been my teacher, my mentor, and my inspiration. And the person who always asks the right questions at the right time. And even though they may make you uncomfortable, and isn't that what we're asked to, to do, is to ask the uncomfortable uh, questions. She has been an activist in the civil rights movement. She has been a leader in Habitat for Humanity. She writes letters to the editor. She attends meetings in her hometown of Waterford to advocate for climate justice and racial justice. She is leading our open, affirming, and reconciling group of the Jeff ministry team. She has enhanced our understanding of our indigenous neighbors. She has been one of the leaders in bringing the land acquisition statement for a vote at the congregational meeting later today, and also where there's an introduction of the Justice Bench Project. But most admirable thing, admirable thing I think that she has ever done is the qualities and the values that she has, she's instilled in her daughter. Rebecca is an act, uh, activist in her own right. And I think that's in large part because of her mother. NCC is blessed by her witness and her faith in action. So thank you, Margaret. The other uh, part of the story about Martha and Mary is about listening. Martha was intent on providing all of the hospitality to Jesus and his disciples and could not understand why Mary was not helping. Jesus said, Martha, Martha, you are distracted by many things, but few things are needed. Mary had her spiritual priorities right and put the worship of God ahead of more mundane matters. Jesus needed the friendship of Mary more than food, and Mary needed to hear the words of Jesus more than her supper. What mundane things in life are keeping you from seeing how God is working through your life? What is keeping you distracted like Martha? I think it's um, appropriate uh, at this time, since I had to prepare for two sermons, I'm going to ask you to do something as part of this worship service, and it's about listening. So both on Zoom and here in uh, the sanctuary, I'm going to ask that you close your eyes, take a deep breath, clear your thoughts, and listen. 
Concentrate on your breathing or your heart beating. Imagine Jesus talking to you and listening, and you should listen to what he says like Mary. So let's listen for a few minutes. You can open your eyes, open your hearts. What did you hear? What spiritual priorities might you incorporate in your daily life this week? I vividly remember Ned Rudy sharing with us the quote from Thomas Keating, who is also the principal developer of Centering Prayer, which we practice here at NCC. He wrote, silence is God's first language Everything else is a poor interpretation or a poor translation. Like Mary, we need to be still and listen to what God is saying. Only then can we understand what God is calling us to be. Amen. It's time for our morning offering. Ralph came up and uh, spoke for um, stewardship. We are grateful for all of the gifts that everybody gives here, no matter what the amount. Um, on PayPal you can give. Um, we're going to be collecting the offering plate today. I um, want to mention that everyone who pledges, um, that is a so important way to financially support the mission and ministries of this church because 98% year in and year out of our pledges are honored. So there's pledge cards uh, in the, the narthex, there's pledge cards um, outside the church office. And you, if you feel uh, the call to pledge, um, that is a, an important way to support this church. So let us take this morning's offering.
for prayers of the people and know that your prayer is heard no matter whether it's um, given by your voice or it's in your heart. So people on uh, Zoom, if you want to put your prayers in the, the chat. Emily uh, asked for prayers of in-laws, Deb and Mike, um, for a celebration of their 40, uh, for, 41st wedding anniversary tomorrow. Rena um, asked for um, Alexa, a family member just diagnosed with cancer. Bless her on her treatment in January, or journey, excuse me. Ocean asked for continued prayers for Marianne, who is now at Gaylord, for two broken vertebrae. Peg is asking for successful um, patient surgery on Thursday. Successful surgery. Liz is asking for prayers and comfort and peace for a close family friend who lost their daughter this past week. Julia is asking for uh, the Calkins family uh, who is grieving for the loss of guys stepmother and Marilyn from uh, Georgia is asking for prayers of Thanksgiving that Kelly and family have made it safely to Honduras and are getting settled in. Also a celebration for a significant mid-decade birthday for Terry tomorrow. <laughs> Jeff is offering prayers for family unity as we move into the next phase of the estate uh, distribution. From Nan, her daughter, Susie, and family, their cat only has a few days to live. From Carol, Josie and Debbie, Bob, Heather, Robin, Emily, and Maggie. Other prayers? Thanksgiving for a wonderful visit with Mary Wassum and prayers for her uh, journey that she's going through. Terry. Uh, so prayers for Jim and his past. Mary. Okay. For, uh, prayers for the family that's grieving. Yes. Wendy? For Marge Frank? Marge and Dick Frank, prayers for them. Linda? Thanksgiving for the potluck uh, supper and the family feeling uh, that was there. Uh, I heard there was over 40 people, is that right? So let's give these prayers up to God for the joys that we uh, share together with family and friends. God in your mercy, hear our prayers. For all of those that need your love and support um, and strength, God in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayers. For our country, for the world, for the effects of climate change, uh, for the war that's going on in Ukraine, um, 
for all of the needs in our world. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And for your own name that God calls you, for Ron. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And let us join together in the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us join together in our closing song. bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God look upon you with kindness and grant you peace this day and every single day of your precious life. Amen. And may the God, uh, peace of Christ be with you. Peace. Thank you.